Essentially what we're doing is utilizing MidJourney and ChatGPT to aid in the creative lift. So the initial project we ran for them was just 500 full, uh, you know, fully created, generated ads and polished everything that we were going to work for them. But the interesting thing here is the results on our end, because we wanted to track this meticulously to make sure that it was actually fulfilling its promise. Um, you know, we saw a 65% reduction in cost and a 65% reduction in production time. So again, that's what we're talking about. Now, this is as simple as it can be. This is the simplest part of this workflow. Essentially, we're creating an image in MidJourney, we're building a template in Figma, we're generating the copy in ChatGPT, and then we're putting it all together, right? Now, how can you do this, right? Think about that one app. That's just one. If I told you we could switch that to seven, eight, nine images, 10 different calls to action, 10 different headlines, 10 different aspect ratios, push one button, they generate all those copies, right? That's what we're talking about. So how can you do this? Now, some, you know, most people, they don't have brand photography. So if you just want to have some creative and you need to start from ground zero, MidJourney is going to be your best friend. So creating ads is going to start, or creating unique ads is going to start here. And the best way to get the, the most production out of MidJourney is to understand the tool and how it works. You know, know what works, know what doesn't. It's just going to make you quicker, and that's going to make us able to scale this. So when we, go to, when we look at this, if you're not familiar with MidJourney, it's a powerful image generator. Basically, you type in some words, and it generates an image. But it's a super creative tool, and it's like the best of AI right now that you can use very easily. So the good thing about mid-journey is that we were introduced to like the prompt, the idea of the prompt, with ChatGPT. And essentially, the art of mid-journey is in the prompt. So if you're going to prompt mid-journey, I want you to think about this sort of uh, equation here. Like, clear and direct prompt will equal clear and direct output. Ambiguous prompt will equal ambiguous output. Now, what does that mean? Clear and direct prompt means you're just giving it really solid sound direction, and it'll produce exactly what you want. When you give it something ambiguous and short and like with no direction, it's just you're going to let Midjourney fill in the blanks and it'll be it take its own creative liberty with your images. So, like creating, you know, I'm sure if you've seen some of this stuff on social, you know, creating futuristic living rooms and spaceships and aliens, that stuff's cool. But we need stuff to look real, right? So, the best way to get that out of Midjourney is to use photorealistic and photography elements. Like luckily, Midjourney responds very well to that. So this is typically what I'm looking at as a, as a sort of structure here. I want to make sure that I'm telling Midjourney a story. Now, what does that mean? Typically, I'm prompting it for the subject and the action of the photo, the environment, the composition, the shot type, the mood, the emotion, specific camera lenses, specific cameras and lenses. This is important. Typically, that'll trigger Midjourney into like a photorealistic mindset. So it'll just, you'll get more production out of it when you use specific cameras. Now, other things like film stock, lighting, color scheme, details and modifiers, all good to use. Um, do you have to use all of these in every single prompt? No. Is this a great structure to get consistency? Yes. So this is a cheat sheet over here too. I'm going to link this at the back end of the presentation. This will give you all the functionality you need in Midjourney to actually scale this, but also some, uh, some elements that you can use as well to really start getting you going. Now, the second important thing about prompting Midjourney is the prompt structure. Like, what does that mean though? Basically, Midjourney will weight your prompt from like left to right as you're reading it. Like the most important, th it'll place the most importance on the first part of the prompt and the least importance on the back end. So, like, Typically, again, when you're looking at this, it, think about what you want. If you want something to focus more on the environment or something to focus more on the color, whatever that is, put it first. If it's inconsequential but you still want it in there, put it last, right? Think about it as a kind of a sliding scale. So let's look at an example here. This is the prompt that we're going to use for the next couple slides, but essentially it's a Land Rover Defender, vi uh, vibrant Cusco Peru, freeze motion, asymmetrical composition, 35 millimeter, Burger Pancro 400, extreme tonal balance, street photography. So we have the subject, we have the environment, we have freeze motion, which will give it like a little dynamic motion to the image. 
Asymmetrical composition means that everything just won't be lined up with perfect symmetry. We have 35 millimeter, which is the camera, that'll give it a little bit more of an analog feel. Burger Pancro 400 is a film stock that'll give it a little bit more of a moody vibe. Um, extreme tonal balance is the balance between light and dark elements in a photo. Typically, really good photographers use this, so it's a great term to use. And then street photography is just like a more candid style of photography. So let's run this and see what we get. Now, this first image over here on the left just says, the, just, excuse me, which is labeled uh, Land Rover. That's the prompt itself. That's the prompt from the last slide. That's what we just ran. We got the car, we got Cusco, we got some tonal balance, we definitely got some mood. So that's a really good shot. Now, these other three, those I just changed up the first element of the prompt so you can see how significantly each image changes, right? So in the second prompt, which says vibrant Cusco Peru, I put that first. And what came through was vibrant. And also, the city came through. The car is pushed back and the image is more focused on the city and the environment, right? So same thing with the extreme tonal balance. You can see there's way more light and dark elements in that photo. And then in the last one, the burger pank row, it's definitely more moody. So sometimes when you're prompting, it's you're, maybe you're not getting what you want. The prompt doesn't suck. It's just sometimes structured wrong. So think about this, you know, it probably will save you a ton of hours as you move through creating on mid-journey. But these are some of the examples that you can expect using a structure like this. Technically, I mean, I just pulled 10 of these out of my library. There's probably 50,000 in there. But the goal here is to be consistent because that's going to make you fast, and making you fast is going to make you way better at just getting this stuff out to market.